number 29 is here, Gino. From that very first game, in fact, from the very first shift when Pavel arrived in the National Hockey League at warp speed, he began to bring you to your feet. There were five 50-goal seasons, back-to-back 60-goal -back seasons with the Canucks. There were the 31 points in 24 games in the great run of 94. But those are just the numbers. What excited hockey fans was the way Pavel scored his goals. Nobody, nobody loved to score goals more than Pavel Bure. And hockey fans everywhere loved to watch him score. What a great player this kid is. This is what they wanted to see, Pavel Bure. I hope I can be in this uniform soon. Yeah, you can be the greatest. You can be the best, you can be the King Kong banging on your chest. You can beat the world, you can beat the war. You can talk the guy, go banging on his door. You can turn his hands up, you can beat the clock. Yeah. You can move a mountain, you can break rocks. You can be a master, don't wait for luck. Dedicate yourself and you go by yourself. Standing in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. On the other way, breaks through the defense, in that goal, he scores! You can run the mile, you can walk straight through hell. Scores! Give me! Right looking for the hat trick! Breaking all the records, they thought that it could be broke. Yeah, do it for your people, do it for your pride. Are you ever gonna know if you never even try? Do it for your country, do it for your mind. Right with that tremendous speed, listen to this crowd. Accompanied by his mother Tatiana and his wife Alina, welcome back to Vancouver, the Russian Rocket, number 10, Pavel Bure.
level. Before we hear from you, a great old friend would like a few words in your honor and to make a special presentation, Mike Gillis. video but um, Pavel on behalf of the Aquilini family and everyone at Canuck Sports and Entertainment I am very proud to share this day with you your wife Elena and your mother Tatiana and all of your family and friends that are joining you here tonight to celebrate this well-deserved honor the moment you became a Canuck you changed the landscape of hockey in Vancouver you electrified the fans and brought a level of excitement that is rare in sports in any city in any sport. You created a new generation of fans regardless of gender or age. Everyone was captivated by the Russian rocket. Fans watched every shift with tremendous anticipation in the hope they might see the next great play or fantastic goal. As your friend, I grew to appreciate not only your skill, speed and athleticism, but also your intelligence. Your ability to analyze the game, expose the opposition, and take advantage of it was at the highest level. You are a welcome addition to Stan, Trevor, and Marcus as the only three other players to have their jerseys retired here in Vancouver. <laughs> On behalf of all of us, I'm thrilled to present you with a trip for two to the 2014 World Cup of Soccer in Brazil to commemorate this great night. The most exciting player in the history of the Vancouver Canucks, the only player to be nominated and put into the Hockey Hall of Fame, ladies and gentlemen, Pavel Bure. Thank you everyone, thank you Jim and Mike for your kind words. It's hard to believe, it's been almost 22 years since I played my first NHL game here in Vancouver. I, w I will never forget that. I was very lucky to be in such a wonderful city with a wonderful people who give me great support. The people of Vancouver have a big heart. And throughout my career, I met many more wonderful people who continue to support me along the way, both on and off the ice. From my very first practice in Russia as a boy to my last NHL game. It's because of those people and those friendships that I stand here tonight. I share this night this honor with all of you. There's many people I'd like to thank tonight. I'd like to start by thanking Francesca Aquilini, the Aquilini family, and the entire Vancouver Canucks organization for this incredible honor of having my jersey retired. I'd like to thank fam uh, Griffith family and John McCarr. I'd also like to thank Mike Gillis, we became partners in 1997, and you've been my good friend ever since. <laughs> Pat Quinn. You are a great man. 
I was so young when first time I met you. You helped me to become a great player, but also taught me about being a man. Thank you and all the people you work with to, to help my and the chill dream come true. Thank you for being here. I would also like to thank all the coaches who contributed to my success throughout my career, as well as all the trainers, doctors, and staff. Thank you. <laughs> to my old teammates over the years, I wouldn't be standing here without you, and I share this honor with each one of you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I'd, I'd also like to give a special thanks to Igor Larionov and Jeff Kortnow. You guys taught me how to be professional, especially in my first year here in Vancouver. We were very lucky to live a dream life, playing hockey, traveling the world, enjoying exciting moments. We had some great laughs and my some great friendships along the way. One friendship I'm most proud of is with this man. Gino, I don't know any, anyone with a bigger heart than you. You've had a great time. We had a great time together over the years. You are a legend and a true friend. Now to my family. There's no words to express my gratitude for all of your support over the years. To my parents, to my mom. I'm a father now, so I have a new appreciation for everything you did for me. Thank you for all the sacrifices you made so I could play the game I love. Thank you. <laughs> to my brother Val, who is here tonight. You were my teammate, my competition. We played together and grew up together. We made each other better athletes and better men. You are a great brother. <laughs> to my wife, Alina, you great friend and great mother. Thank you. <laughs> and finally, to all of you, the fans here in the stands and watching on TV. We play for you. Thank you for all the cheers. Thank you for all support over the years. I will never forget those years we spent together. I made my great friends here in Vancouver and I love coming back. I especially remember our Stanley Cup run in 1994. You were there for us every night. And you carried us when we needed you the most. It's one of my best memories. Nobody deserves Stanley Cup more than you. And it's going to happen soon. I know it will. Right here on ice. Mike, my words. And it's going to mean more than anything because of your amazing support. Thank you for tonight. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Enjoy the game.
your family join us. It's time for you to join Stan Smeal, Trevor Linden, and Marcus Nasland as the only Vancouver Canucks ever to have their sweater numbers retired. You are the first Vancouver player ever to reach the Hockey Hall of Fame, and now your number 10 is retired forever. What a great player that did it. He is the greatest. Is there anybody more exciting than the Russian Rocket? Pavel Murray has just scored his third penny down goal for standing ovation. This is what they wanted to see. What a play! Murray scores! <laughs> over the blue line. Makes a nifty move, breaks through the defense, in on goal, he scores! Abu Murray! You know, you put it on the rocket stick. Watch out! Congratulations, Pavel. Thanks for the memories. Thank you, hockey fans. Now let's drop the puck. Enjoy the game. James Reimer is now 4 0 with a 949 save percentage after a 43 save shutout in Edmonton on Tuesday. He's 8 0 for his career in the month of October and has never played in the month of November. Roberto Luongo, often haunted by October, got through it with a 7 4 1 record. The most wins for the month of October in his 14 year career, and usually it's onward and upward from there for him. McCauley. McQuie, Murchison, and Wheeler are the officials for this game in Vancouver, and we're about to get underway with Vancouver's newly minted contract. Centerman Henrik Sedin and Daniel Sedin on the ice with Ryan Kessler on what they're calling a super line out here against Dave Bolin, David Clarkson, and former Canuck Mason Raymond, who's having a chat with his old pal Ryan Kessler before they get started. And Clarkson and Daniel Sedin and Croach. Long shot in by Alex Edler, who's on defense with Jason Garrison. And the Canucks will immediately try and move out of their own zone, but Boland overskated the puck. Henrik Sedin back to the front of the net. Daniel Sedin checked by Dion Fuduff. Fuduff and Carl Gunnarsson, the shutdown pair to play against the Sedins in all likelihood, although if they're going to do that, they'll have to play a lot. Ryan Kessler's centering pass didn't get through. Put up to Mason Raymond. Pinching on him is Jason Garrison, and the Canucks hold the puck in. Daniel Sedin looking for his brother. Thankful off the side of the net. Kessler with a sharp angle shot. Boland stopped that. And the Canucks have a dominant opening shift with the Sedins and Ryan Kessler. Jason Garrison aggressively pinching again. Holds the puck in for Vancouver. And now the puck's knocked out of the air by a high stick, and that benefits the Leafs. They needed to stop and play. Well, one thing you've seen early in this season by John Tortorella is faith in his top guys. He goes head-to-head. -head, all the talk about Bolin versus Henrik Sedin. So what does he do? He puts Henrik right out against the Bolin line. And this is how you have to play against that line offensively. You have to have your head on a swivel. You have to play down low. And there's a great example of the hard work along the boards that the Sedins do so effectively. Last couple of seasons, the Canucks waded into games an awful lot. Doesn't look like they're going to do that here today. James Van Riemsdyk, sharp angle, missed the net. And the Leafs' top line is on the ice with Nazem Kadri, Phil Kessel, and James Van Riemsdyk. Canucks are changing on the fly to counter that. 
Alex Burroughs just missed a pass. Kessel ahead for Kadri, intercepted and cleared by Kevin BX off the defense. Darren Archibald dumps the puck in and changes. Vancouver's second line right now is Mike Santarelli, Alex Burroughs, and Chris Higgins, whose shot went just wide of the net. Higgins has had a great start to the season. So has Mike Santarelli, who's allowed them to put Ryan Kessler on the top line. Hard centering pass was blocked. Burroughs just back from an injury from the blue line. Chris Tanev shoots, stopped by Reimer, although I don't think he saw it with a crowd in front, including Higgins. Kessel to center, turned the puck over. Chris Tanev paired on defense with Dan Hadges. They've got some time. Toronto's changing. Uh, good early pace despite the fact everyone was standing around. Both teams with some good jump here early. Henrik Sedin back on the ice again. Quick rest, back on, get used to that. Here's Joffrey Lupo in over the blue line for Toronto. He's turned back at the defense. 50 little back pass from Kessler to Sedin and back. Ryan Kessler try to fend off Joffrey Lupo and Dion Phaneuf. Can't do it, but he stays on the puck. Phaneuf. This will be an interesting night to watch the matchup if Tortorella keeps short resting and bringing out that Sedin line. That's why you really need two lines to play against them. And that's what's happening right now with Joffrey Lupo. Nikolai Kuhlman just back off a broken bone in his ankle. And Jay McClement, good checkers. It'll be interesting to see how much John Tortorella tries to get his top line out against the Kadri line. Take advantage of changing, trading chances with that top offensive line. Trevor Smith, Vancouver boy, playing in a home game. Franson shot. Colton Orr tipped the puck into the corner as the fourth lines get a little ice time here. A centering pass. He was Orr in front. Couldn't make that puck settle down. Yannick Weber, a defenseman playing forward on the fourth line, dumped the puck in. And James Reimer hangs on. Down between the benches in a wonderful atmosphere in this building this afternoon, Glenn Healy. Well, we saw some great skill in that uh, ceremony, and we've seen some great skill already with the Sedin. But you got to bring a little brawn, and that's exactly what Markson does here. They're going to play against them all night long. They're going to finish their checks all night long. You're right, guys. Two minutes into the hockey game, and the Sedin line has already had two shifts. And Reimer, lots of traffic in front. Good positional saves. Rebounds clear. I think early on, it's, it's going to be the Sedin line that plays more than anybody until they establish a lead. Only Crosby plays more minutes than the Sedin line. Mason Raymond chasing the puck into the attacking zone. Dan Hamhuis trying to contain him. He won't surprise anybody here. Mason Raymond, six years of Vancouver Canuck. Passed into the middle. Had the pass intercepted. Here's Zach Cassian trying to pull away. Tanev joins him on the rush. And Darren Archibald. And catching the puck and stopping play is James Reimer. Well, it'll be interesting to watch to see how Randy Carlisle is more the matcher than John Tortorella. And Molin line was out, so... What does Tortorella do? He puts a different line other than the Sedins and they create some offense, get the puck in the offensive zone. Now you're forced to make a change as Randy Carlisle and here's where the matchup does get interesting. Because, because Randy will send out that second line you talked about that might be a checking line and that's McClement, Kuhlman and Lupo. Look for the Sedins to be next up so Bolin probably has to be aware but that keeps Kessel off the ice with Kadri. Always a chess match. But if you're going to try and match John Tortorella the way he plays his top players, you do keep your head spinning. Nikolai Kuhlman legs to center. Jay McClemmon with him on his left. Knocked away, and Cody Franson following the play got the puck but had his pocket pick. Here's a 2 on one Chris Higgins and Mike Santarelli. Higgins, Santarelli, great save by Reimer. Here's Santarelli again in front. Higgins, another great save. Two sensational saves by James Reimer of Higgins and Burroughs. And the crowd standing and buzzing in disbelief at what James Reimer has done early on. Without a stick is Cody Franzen. He's in some trouble from the blue line. Ryan Stanton, Kevin Bieksa to Burroughs. Another fine save by Reimer. He's in the shooting gallery, but he's stopping everything. He's had three big ones off Higgins alone. Well, what a way to make an impact on the road. And Reimer's athleticism on full display there. Both legs, he's made 10 bell saves. Now the Leafs top line on the ice trying to turn it back the other way. Higgins has had a great start to the season. The city line is coming on. Carl Gunnarsson in anticipation is on the ice. And if I get somebody at the Leaf bench, 
And the Leaf fans, and there's a lot of them here, are applauding James Reimer. Well, you mentioned Reimer's undefeated record in October. You can see with the odd man rush, he stays back in his net. I'll be interested in Glenn Healy's thoughts here. He backs right up, makes one athletic save right along the goal line, doesn't overplay it again, and look at the reaction, the reflex to get the right pad back. Well, what I like about Reimer is when they reduce the goal pads, I think he's a lot more agile. And those east-west saves with smaller pads, you're much more able to get to them. Shots 8 nothing for the Vancouver Canucks. And eight pretty good ones. <laughs> and eight scoring chances. And Glenn, is that one there, when you've got that odd man rush, you, you're forced to back up so that you don't get caught on that cross crease? Absolutely. And, you know, you're well aware, too, of guys that are struggling. I mean, Santorelli, is, it's no surprise he hasn't scored in 10 games. So chances are he's going to move the puck. The confidence isn't quite there. The fans reacting to watching that on the big screen that you're watching at home. And they're, they're reviewing, they're reviewing just to it. see if that puck crossed the goal line. It was darn close. I, I agree with you, Glenn. In years past with Reimer, early on he'd get too much off balance and in forward. And here you could see his athleticism able to kick back. Clearly that puck did not go over the line. And what a start for number 34. And we have the big matchup here with the Sedins and Ryan Kessler, who's an excellent faceoff man and can move in on his strong side against Bolin. Really good. Daniel Sedin scoops the puck to center. Henrik awaits its arrival. He's got Kessler with him. Backhand pass into the middle of the ice, and Mason Raymond takes over, trying to spring Bolin. All he can do is deflect the puck in on Roberto Luongo, who hasn't had many touches of it, and he covers up. Well, so much has been made of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Outshot in 12 of their 14 games. 10 of those games, 35-plus shots against. And the 1A, 1B tandem has been in full bore. Last three games, Reimer's been unbelievable. And Bernier has also carried the mail well. A great choices for Randy Carlyle. He's made much mention about this whole potential battle between the number ones. But right now, it doesn't seem to matter who's there. And Zach Cassian and Colton Orr, nose-to-nose, -nose, sparring at the face-off circle. I don't know if the Leafs need a fight. They need a shot. Five minutes in, 8 nothing. Yeah, they're just playing to the script. Rope and go. Once again. <laughs> That's like P.J. said in the pregame. Alexander Edwards chasing the puck. There's a big hard hit by Colton Orr. See if that inspires his team. Trevor Smith scooped the puck to the end boards. Fraser McLaren for checking. He tried to get in a hit on Garrison, who cleared the puck to center. Smith to Jake Gardner. Orr advances the puck. Edler steps up. McLaren bumped into him. Aaron Archibald. Couldn't move the puck by center. Both teams are changing on the fly as Edler steps up to center. Made a pass that didn't connect, but it got through to Henrik, to Daniel. Anticipated by Cadre, so it didn't come back. And the puck comes just outside the line. What a great fourth line shift for the Leafs. So Colt Nor not fighting, but great impact. Daniel Sedin with a big slap shot that was kicked out by Reimer. And Kessler couldn't handle the rebound. And there's a penalty coming up to Toronto on the play. It's a hooking call. And Nazem Kadri's going to go. And Jim, this is where we did talk about matchup. Randy Carlisle trying to get either Bolin or McClement out against this top line. The fourth line gets a good shift. Having to change on the fly, and this is a tough position for Kadri. He's got to deal down low with not only the Sedins, but then the big body of Kessler. And Kessler able to battle hard. Kadri takes the penalty. I don't think there's a line in hockey that uses their body better. They protect the puck, shield the puck, and you're forced to hook and hold. I don't think there's a line that gets less calls against them. The Sedins, on certain nights, it's like you're sea doing with them. They're on the power play, but that's been the bad news. One for its last 21 at home. But they score. Henrik Sedin. That'll bump the slump. Canucks have been getting chances, but 29th in the league on the power play, and they start to remedy that here. And it starts with the faceoff. Kessler gets it back. A power play with a purpose. A little tip pass and a positional play in front. And Henrik Sedin using the disher. This time, he's got his stick down, reads it perfectly. No hesitation. Absolutely no chance for James Reimer. Total set play. Kessler knows exactly where Sedin is. It's a one-touch pass. As a goaltender, you never expect that. And Daniel is actually going to get the goal. It hit his sweater going in. 
as you can see, as that pass was going across and was tipped, it was Daniel Sedin who lifted the stick of Cody Francis, and that shot hits off the sweater. Watch the little bulge. Does a great job of lifting the stick right there of Franson, and then a little bit of a bulge off of the sweater of Daniel Sedin and in the back of the net. It was going in anyway. Regardless, it's Sedin from Sedin. And it's eight seconds after the penalty to Nazem Kadri, and Vancouver has a one to nothing lead. And for Henrik Sedin with a point on that, 11 straight games with a point in his 645th consecutive game. Well, uh, whether it's 22 or 33, watch the sweater of Daniel Sedin. It gets hit right there, and then the puck goes up and in the top corner. They've announced it as Henrik. I wonder if the brothers will have a discussion. So you, you keep it. But even the awareness to get out of the way, to know the puck's, because that puck's got velocity on it. He gets out of the way. If he doesn't, it hits him, and it's no goal. Another hot shot right off the draw, and Reimer stopped it, and the puck trickled into the corner as Alex Edler got a shot off the faceoff. Canucks are the better team early on with a 1-0 lead, 11-0 shots on goal. And Edler holds the puck in again. Higgins, Santarelli, and Burroughs go to work. Bouncing puck, Alex Burroughs. Checked by Cody Francis. Puck's thrown up the boards. Kevin Bieksa pinching down, holds it in. Mike Santarelli, he's a Burnaby lad playing for his home team. Bieksa with a shot, that's blocked. And David Clarkson gets to center trying to get by Bieksa. He'll need some help. Mason Raymond dumps the puck in. Toronto's changing on the fly. Clarkson got hit in the foot there. He's a little ginger going back to the bench. Kevin Bieksa. Used to be on the shutdown pair with Dan Hanhuis. They've been split up. He's now playing with Brian Stanton. Picked up off waivers from Chicago, and he's been a real steady defenseman on a pair with Bieksa. Great move by Gillis. They identified a couple teams that were going to have problems with contracts and with the cap going down. Chicago was one of them. And so that's a guy who's on their radar, and they picked him up, and he's been a great ad. You're right, dude. Watch him a little bit. He reminds you of Dan Hamhuis, and that's what Kevin Bieksa thinks of him, too. I think of Stanton on the blue line and Santarelli up front. Those are two great finds that have had a real significant impact here early on. Paul Ranger dumps the puck in. Both teams make a change here. Eight minutes in. Toronto still hasn't had a shot on goal. Dion Phaneuf barging into the play. Pushed the puck across the line, and the play is offside. Well, what a start on Pavel Bure night. The Canucks look like they didn't warm up. All Burry in the lineup, leading one to nothing. Toronto hasn't had a shot. Glenn Healy is standing just facing James Reimer because that's where all the action's been. Could be three nothing. I don't care about the number of shots. I mean, that, that is important. It's who's getting the shots, who's getting the scoring chances, and where are the scoring chances coming from. This could be a 3 nothing game if not for 34. He came ready to play. I get that ceremonies are long sometimes, and you may not be ready at the start of the game. I get that a 4 o'clock start is difficult, but the Leafs have got to get playing here. 11 nothing are the shots, and it should be 3 nothing for Vancouver. And so they're fortunate it's just one nothing, and now they face the Santarelli, Burroughs, and Higgins line that's had as good a start as the Sedins. Asim Kadri on the ice with Phil Kessel and James Van Riemsdyk. But back into the attacking zone for Vancouver. Kadri up the boards, anticipating that. Chris Tanev, he held it in only for a moment. Kadri to Kessel. Through center, Morgan Riley joins the rush. Kessel with a shot, and Roberto Luongo makes his first save. Eight minutes and 17 seconds in. Uh, Luongo makes his first save, but he needed to hold on to the rebound. And why? Because you get a good example of Morgan Riley, his instincts offensively. 13th game now in the National Hockey League. No hesitation jumping up, forces Burroughs to take him, and then does a nice job of opening up some ice for Phil Kessel. Kessel almost squeaks that one through. Hey, a smart shot by Kessel, because if that does squeak through, as a goaltender, you are questioning yourself. Clarkson hooked the shot wide right off of one face off by Dave Bolin. Zach Cassian gets out the finish with Baron Archibald and Brad Richardson. Bowling along the boards, battling a pinching Alex Edler. The Canucks bring their defensemen into the play a lot early on. And it's giving the Leafs a tough time getting out of their own zone. You have to be able to make plays along the half wall there under pressure. Not only from the forward coming back, but you've got a D-man coming down on you 90% of the time. 
Jason Raymond mishandled the puck, but he's got a defenseman there. Beyond Phaneuf looks up ice. Now the Leafs are changing their top defensive pair, and the Sedin line is coming back on. The Sedins and Ryan Kessler with 32 points in the last 10 games together. Daniel, Henrik, slap shot, Reimer the save, and he gathered in the rebound before Ryan Kessler could arrive on the scene. Smart save, top of the crease, not further out than that, no rebound. That's exactly what you need from Reimer. Quiet feet, quiet hands, look, he's still almost in the blue paint, makes it look easy. Not chasing the game. You saw a good replay behind James Reimer on our Hockey Night in Canada net cam. Brought to you by LASIK MD. Ryan Kessler to Hendrick Sedin, the pass was behind it. And up and Gunnarsson, they're going to go off the right back on again. Here's Joffrey Lupel off the wing. Jay McClement driving the net, Nikolai Kuhlman. Coming in, couldn't get the puck, but up with a shot, kicked down. McClellan can't get the shot away after the puck was knocked to him by Kuhlman. At center, Kessler ran into too many leaps, and a pass just about sprung Joffrey Lupo, but goes for icing instead. Well, one of the things that you have to wonder with the Vancouver Canucks is can you maintain this kind of pace? John Tortorella has been playing the heck out of his top three. Much has been made of it. Here's the increase in ice time for Kessler, Henrik, and Daniel from last year. And I beg the question, in an early scene, players love it. But over the course of an 82-game grind, that's got to come down at some point. Tortorella's philosophy, it always has been, I'm just worried about tonight. Yep. You win or lose with your best guys or whoever's going. And as he has mentioned in the press conference with their contracts, the guys have been going, and they've been going well, so they're playing well. The problem you have is you, you have seven games in 13 days for Vancouver. Yeah. And you've got the mandatory days off. They haven't even had a chance to get a practice in. So they've got a tough schedule over the next 10 days. And then it settles down for them. Practice? You want to <laughs> talk about talk practice? About practice? Higgins with the shoot-in. Alex Burrows and Paul Ranger converge upon the puck. That is one way to endear yourself with the Stars, though, isn't it? For Tortorella. He demands a lot of things, but if you're playing hard for him and you're a top player, you know you're going to get the action. And you know the guys will love that, especially veterans. None of them are complaining. No. Here's Mike Santarelli trying to drive to the net. Can't get there. Paul Ranger headed him off of the pass. Chris Higgins turned to keep Gardner from getting the puck, but it came out to center. Here's James Van Riemsdyk, cross ice pass, quick shot, great save. Kessel stopped by Luongo. And that dynamic duo, Phil Kessel and Van Riemsdyk were together again, and Kessel get into it with Santorelli in the bench. It's going to be a Vancouver penalty here. It's going to be Higgins with a slash as he got it on Van Riemsdyk as he was going off the ice. The trailing official saw it. Higgins gets the penalty. Kessel was just trying to get to the bench. He got mixed up at the Vancouver bench before he got to his own on Hockey Night in Canada. Spots going on away from the play. You can see the initial hit Higgins didn't like. He just turns and gets Van Riemsdyk in the back of the leg, and there's the drama that drew the penalty. And that wasn't even half of what was going on at the bench. So here's some drama right here. Phil Kessel, great scoring chance. The shots are 13-2. Kessel has both of them, and they both have been scoring chances. These teams aren't looking for shots tonight, it's just scoring chances. Now the Leafs who have a heck of a power play are in trouble shorthanded. Brad Richardson trying to get the puck to the net. Vancouver has three shorthanded goals, Toronto has four of them, so that's a danger in this game. But Toronto's power play has been much better than Vancouver's. Second in the league, but one for its last eight. Dave Bowling to Phil Kessel. Back to the blue line, Dion Fredo. Cody Franson on the other side. Big crowd forms in front of the net. Van Riemsdyk sweeps the puck around to Kessel. Boland in the slot. Bunks the puck back to Fedov. He takes the shot. Luongo absorbs it. With Van Riemsdyk there doing battle with Dan Hamhuis. Well, Dan Hamhuis, not a big body, but he does an effective job of getting inside and underneath Van Riemsdyk. I mean, a big body of Van Riemsdyk trying to get to the front of the net. Can't get there. Watch. He might not be as big. But Hamhus gets underneath for Van Riemsdyk. Got to get down. You got to get through and try to somehow get in the way of Luongo there. Nice job by Hamhus. Has him Kadri on the face off against Ryan Kessler. Now with Daniel Sedin. Jake Gardner in the second power play unit. Morgan Riley. 
Takes a pass from Gardner, moves in and shoots, and he just missed the net. Pretty interesting pair on defense, and it could be pretty explosive with Gardner and Morgan Riley out together on the power play. Mason Raymond lost the handle, but Gardner takes over. Intercepted by Kessler, and he can't make the puck settle down as he tried to take off up the middle. Morgan Riley, here by North Vancouver, passes off. Joffrey Lupo lost an edge as he tried to cut for the net. Alex Edler cut him off, and the puck is cleared. And a great difference here with John Tortorella coaching is you'll see not only all the ice time at even strength for the Sabines and Ryan Kessler, but they're penalty killers, and important ones, too. We saw a shift for Henrik Sedin, and then a shift on the penalty kill with Daniel Sedin. That's, you're absolutely right. Vigneault would not change his strategy. Tortorella makes audible. Raymond couldn't cut to the net. Poke check behind it. Kessel. The Enfinuf was just about in too far. Franson's one-timer tipped just wide of the net. Mason Raymond gathers in the puck and leaves it for Joffrey Lupo. On the other side to Phil Kessel. Back to Cody Franson. Enfinuf is open. One-timer on that fell a couple of bodies in front. Well, I think it hit Dan Hamhuis, who was there with Joffrey Lupo, and both saw their life flash before their eyes. Uh, Lupo's limping back to the bench as well. That one looked like it was going to hit Hamhuis right in the face. Luckily, he didn't. Here's Daniel Sedin back the other way. Lost the puck in his skates. That's Henrik Sedin. And so Kessel takes off the other way. Stops up. Feeds Paul Ranger. Backhand shot. Save. And on the rebound, Kessel couldn't get to the puck. Now he pokes it to the net. Jay McClement is there. And down is Roberto Luongo, but the puck is still loose. Here's McClement with a big crowd in front. And the pass comes back to the blue line. Carl Gunnarsson. Paul Ranger into the slot. The pass missed Nikolai Kuhlman, or he missed it. To the blue line, Gunnarsson fakes the shot. Pass was tipped. Ranger turns and shoots off the side of the net. Now the Leafs seem to have their footing. They didn't score in the power play, but finally they're playing in the attacking zone. What a frantic pace. Good battles in front of the net, too. Kuhlman, Gunnarsson shoots. That's blocked. That's Tortorella hockey. A wall in front of the goaltender. Back the other way, here come the Sedins, Daniel, Henrik, Daniel couldn't tip it, Gunnarsson had his stick. Ryan Stanton from St. Albert, Alberta, former Moose Jaw Warrior, like Morgan Riley, knocked the puck in, and Cody Franson brings it right back up. Franson, Kessel's back on, Van Riemsdyk, Cadley shoots, and a slider just missed. Kessel's into it here with Alex Burrows, they're gonna fight! not something you see every day. Tell me you picked those two <laughs> in the pool for first fight of the game. Not a fair trade-off, though. Gabe's got some emotion in it now. Castle and Burles will go. 1-0 Vancouver on CBC's Hockey Night in Canada from the West Coast. Time now for the Hockey Night Bio brought to you by Subway Restaurants on Alex Burrows who just got into it with Phil Kessel. He missed 12 games with a foot injury. The shame of it all was that just prior to the injury which happened in San Jose in the first game of the season, he had spoken to trainers about altering his boot guards when they got home. He thus had taken them off two days prior to the injury. Burrows admits it's still working on complete comfort, but after missing three to four weeks, he's never taking them off again. Jim? In a lineup that's been pretty thin, he was certainly welcomed back in this homestand. Coincidental minor penalties to Burroughs and Phil Kessel. Mason Raymond leaves to start to pick up their game, or at least get into it. David Clarkson along the boards, turns, fires, Luongo fights it off, makes the save and the rebound too. Well, you can see what Raymond can bring offensively, just getting a little bit of open ice, nice little curl back, and then Clarkson with bodies in front. An excellent job of getting the rebound by Luongo after a good chance down low by Raymond. Little wrister, not much velocity, easy save. Now let's go to the yin and the yang. This one, lots of velocity, 161 kilometers an hour, and that's why it hurts. Lupo's seen that movie before, hasn't he? That was human bowling, it knocked them both down. Yeah, broke his arm prior to that, so. Another chat on the ice here. Colt Nor back at it. I must have missed the memo on these teams hating each other. Yeah. Because there has been tons between the benches. 
And as you like to say, Huey, lots of why I honest. Colton Orr and Tom Sestito. They look like they're going to go. He's going to get rid of them. Yeah. Too much talking. Yeah, Not West McCauley had enough. McLaren better be careful. He might get an extra. Can debate and argue all you want as Colt Nor is here. He, he doesn't like the fact he's getting kicked out. West These McCauley is seeing a good game going and didn't want it to defuse, try to defuse what he knew was going to happen. It's unfortunate. You know, you look at Colt Nor, his first shift of the hockey game, bowled over a Vancouver Canucks. So you start to yeah. think, okay, I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to do. And then, of course, it starts to get out of hand. You know, obviously, Phil Kessel shouldn't be fighting. And right. Shadeen was threatened, and so it's okay. Let's put our arsenal out, get the stage fight out of the way, and let's play. You're right, Glenn, because that shift of that fourth line where Orr got the big hit on Alexander Edler got the Leafs into the game. Uh, basically, McCauley got the stage fight out of the way just without the fight. Both guys gone. Game's going on. Brad Richardson. Backhand pass. Knocked up the air. That's onside. Fraser McLaren. Backhander stopped. And Luongo gets bumped. You'd think these teams played each other every second day. Now, this is a big game for both these teams. The Leafs out on a West Coast swing where they got an opportunity to go 3-0 in a place that they haven't won in a long time. 10 years. 3,361 <laughs> days. I'm and, not counting. And the Vancouver Canucks trying to continue to establish themselves in the West. You can see the bump by McLaren. Garrison goes down and Luongo reacts. So let's take a look at how some of the momentum started for the Maple Leafs. Nothing going on. They're getting outshot 11 nothing. Fourth line comes on and that big hit turned the tide. Shots are now 13 tenths. The Leafs are back again. And this is the reason for Orr being sent on the ice, in my mind. Phil Kessel shouldn't be fighting. That's not a fair trade off. Watch Phaneuf and Cassian. Phaneuf gave him a stick as he came on. Cassian's been in it with a, into it with a few different people here. Jai in that very good game on Wednesday. He's trying to make amends, and Reimer just made another good save. And he's to the net, tipped by Higgins wide. The last save off Santarelli. Tanev pinches in and holds the puck. Tadwick tipped the puck along the boards, got it by Dan Hadhuis. Tanev first man back, but Ames got, got the hit, but back for the puck. Mike Santarelli. Way to the Burnaby Winter Club. Spinorama by Higgins. Can't get the puck to the net. Santarelli did, and Reimer had to make another save. Oh, Looks like it hit Reimer right in the mask. That happens a lot to him. Hasm Cadbury. Advances the puck. There's Morgan Riley on his own up in the play. Gets it deep. Now he's trying to get to the bench. Kevin Bieksa. A little back pass to Ryan Stanton. And center anticipating this Cody Franson, so he stepped up, broke the play up. Nobody's got Henrik on the other side, moving in on Phaneuf. This pass gobbled up by McClendon. Clarkson trying to make this a two-on-one. Raymond streaking towards the net. Can't get a hold of the puck. Ryan Kessler got there first. And the speed of Kessler, that was the right guy back-checking for the Canucks. Clarkson down on top of the puck, and he's sick and tired of being pushed at. This is like a divisional game, isn't it? Lots of back and forth, lots of talking before and after whistles. Phaneuf and Stanton now going at it. It's... You know, the big difference, you look around this building, still as you see all in the West, lots of Maple Leaf sweaters. And with the Leafs first in the East, they're trying to establish something here. And it's been some great back and forth. Jim, at the start of this, Phaneuf, Went right after Cassian as he came on. And then down low, a little bit of sh pushing and shoving and hacking and whacking. And more jawing than anything else. Frederick Lequier is going to call penalties here. Here's the jawing, guys. This is what's happening in front of me all game long. I mean, there is a total stare down of the bench. Got the mute button pushed for all of it. And here's how this started. A couple whacks, the axle comes in. And then there's Stanton and Knuff, and they almost get at it. So a couple of roughing calls, and the jabbing continues from the bench now. Knuff is getting a, a load full from the Vancouver Canucks. 
And out of that, Clarkson and Bietza ended up getting the penalty <laughs> instead of Stanton and Fanuf. This is the end of a long, long shift then, Fanuf. He's got a little bit of rest here with all the decision making on the penalties, but. Now it'll be four on four. And Fanuf and Gunnarsson stay on. Mason Raymond and David Boland. Brad Richardson won the faceoff. Mike Santarelli, Alex Hitler to the net, James Reimer stops the play. He's done a lot better at, at that early this season, not giving up rebounds and stopping play when it needs to be stopped. We'd like you to take your game to the next level with Hockey Night's second screen. Interact and compete for cash prizes at cbcsports.ca slash second screen. Santarelli and Boland. The Canucks have been a better face-off team early in the season, and they win this draw, and Alex Hedler winds up and fires, and it's a blocker save by James Reimer. Higgins and Santarelli. You think without Santarelli, you'd ever see Tortorella go with the Kessler experiment on the wing? He wouldn't have been able to. Yeah, just really freed him up to coach the way he wanted to, to change things up. Santarelli and Higgins played a bit together in Florida. Florida. They're familiar with each other. And remember, he, he's a 20-goal scorer at one point. 2011, he had 20 goals and 41 points. So there's offense in his game. And he's just getting the opportunity here. Fans call the two-minute men in the ice penalty against Toronto. Neither referee would take the bait. Higgins. Oh, look. Sedins are back on. Here comes Daniel. He's got Henrik with him as they crisscross. Hamhuis jumped to the front of the net. Henrik. Tanev, the only defenseman back at the line, as Henrik stops up, looks for his brother and finds him. Tanev at the blue line. One timer up over top of the net. Henrik goes after the puck. Gardner to Paul Ranger, taken down by Daniel Sedin. Kadri's back for the puck. Henrik Sedin's after him. Kicks the puck loose, but Daniel's stick is tied up, and he and Ranger battle. Kadri takes Henrik. Henrik with one hand on his stick, battling in front, a little backhander through the legs, and that would have been some pretty. Tanev, Daniel, Hamhuis shoots off the blocker of James Reimer. Hamhuis, Daniel Sedin pinching in his Tanev. Big four-on-four four shift for the Sedins, and now a penalty is being called for cross-checking against Paul Ranger. Well, if any of you watched the press conference with the Sedin signing, you, you heard John Tortorella talking about people calling them soft. And this is why he said not. Look at the battles down low. Go into the hard areas. Henrik out duels. Kadri down below keeps it alive. They win the battle along the boards. And those are the tough areas that John Tortorella was talking about. Teams don't like to get it. Ranger gets frustrated. And Ranger ends up taking the penalty at the end. All of this started, guys, by one pass in the neutral zone. Sedin to Sedin. It was a one-on-three. There's nothing there. And those two guys do their magic. Absolutely nothing. The Leafs are back, and there's four of them back. Enter the zone, two scoring chances, and now you've got to kill a penalty. Now it's a four-on-three power play, but the Sedins are done for, a, for at least a few seconds. Got to take a break. Leafs couldn't get the puck out to Jay McClellan, an excellent penalty killer. Gets the puck to center. He's a big reason why Toronto's penalty killing is third in the league. That was a big face-off, wasn't it? Just yeah. kills the time, doesn't allow the setup. Back in, Ryan Kessler trying to fight through. Dion Fanuf takes the puck after Gunnarsson bulldog Kessler to the ice. And the puck has shot the length of the ice. Kevin BX are back with Alexander Edler. Edler goes off, drop pass to Henrik Sedin, hits Kessler on the fly, fires, and that went off the crossbar, off the boards and all the way down the ice as we get to a five-on-four power play in the last minute of the first. You've seen a lot of high shots on James Reimer. That's a, that has been the book last year, and here early on, the Canucks not able to find the net. And they're trying to beat him, too, from bad angles. Yeah. Still shooting at his feet. Maybe they're looking for a rebound. Maybe they think he cheats. But you're right, that's been tonight's book on Reimer. Dan Hamhuis. That drop back. Kessler's in over the line. Jason Garrison feeds the puck to Kessler. He swatted at it, and the puck hits the netting with nine seconds to go. 
One of the things I like about this experiment for Tortorella is with Kessler on the right, he has that right-handed shot to play off of the Sedins who do so effectively. And when you do get to the power play, you're in a position where you don't disrupt your other lines. If you're having to take Kessler off of another line to get on a power play, that affects going forward. At least they're all together. You have to figure that power play will start to click as the season goes along. Kessler as a center has always been a shooter. Yep. So it's not a real stretch to move him to the wing at all. In fact, he was a winger when he came up out of college into the minors. Off the draw, the puck's kicked to the boards. The Canucks try and get a set play going off a last second faceoff. Cassian and Fanuf were in it right off the faceoff. And as the horn sounds, Zach Cassian's trying to get Dion Fanuf to take the bait and get into a scrap. Nothing doing. The Leaf captain turns away. What a period of hockey. It was all Canucks early. The Leafs got themselves back in it. Coming up in our first intermission, it's Don Cherry, Coach's Corner. I'm sure he'll have some words on Pavel Burry on Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Welcome back inside Rogers Arena. The Leafs, uh, they were down 11-0 to the shot category, but they have actually clawed their way back. They're now 18-11 in favor of Vancouver, so the power play definitely helped the Leafs. Dion Phaneuf led all players with 14 shifts in that first period. Jim? And every shift at five on five that he had was against the Sedins. They're on track for another mid 20 minute night and they're on the ice to start this period. Daniel is officially credited with the goal that you picked up on, Craig, and I'm sure there'll be an interesting conversation between the brothers after this game. <laughs> you never with really your, touched it, your sweater your touched sweater. it. <laughs> and you're gonna take that from me? But it was Henrik from Daniel and Kessler, 32 points in 10 games since they went together as a line. And they start the second period with a defensive pair of Dan Hamhuis and Jason Garrison because it's a power play for 32 seconds for Vancouver. Jay McClement, Nikolai Kudelman. Nikolai Kudelman, just his third game of the year. He's coming back off a broken foot. I bet he finds this pace. It's a tough one to take. Gets right into it, that's for sure. Little drop back, Henrik. Kessler with some speed on the wing. He got by Carl Gunnarsson. And by Dion Fanuf, who snatches the puck away and clears it down the ice. And that'll give Vancouver one last rush on this power play to start the second period. And his stretch pass, Daniel Sedin in front. Garrison alone in front of the net, tipped the puck wide. How did Jason Garrison get to be alone in front of the net? Penalty's over, five on five, Sedin's have the puck. Henry. Daniel turns and shoots. There's a rebound, but it eluded Dan Hamhuis. Jason Garrison has a great shot. Takes it. That's blocked. Another shot by Kessler. Missed the net. McClement is hobbled, but he's still staying out there trying to get after Hamhuis. He blocked the shot from Garrison. He's got to be one of the hardest shooters in the league. Henrik he trying to shield the puck from Paul Ranger. He just pushed his man off the puck. Jay McClement takes over. Good job by Ranger there, not getting head fake with any turnaround or spin off. Did a good job of getting right in the body and pinning him against the board. Alex Edler to center. Mike Santarelli trying to spring Burroughs. David Clarkson broke the play up. And as Edler cruises back, this is an icing call against Toronto. And one of the challenges playing against the Sabines is to stop the cycle. And this is an excellent job of Ranger at the end of the shift. So you're tired, fatigued, come in, just came with a real purpose, knew that he had support coming behind him, and just took the body and allowed McClement to take the puck. Canucks Brad Richardson off the faceoff, got a shot that hit a leg, and Clarkson chips the puck to center. Ender with Mason Raymond right on him. Threw the puck to an area, Zach Cassian was there. Off the boards, Richardson chases the puck. Cody Franson got there first for Toronto. Cassian, the Richardson, Darren Archibald is in front of the net. David Poland up the boards. Mason Raymond couldn't clear the puck. Edler pinched, and Vancouver's done that a lot tonight. And so the puck stays in. Cassian trying to work himself open in front. Centering pass, he shoots, scores! On a ricochet! Cassian shot. But like a pinball, it bounced a couple of times before it beat James Reimer, 2-0 Vancouver. Uh, Cassian started that whole play with the reason Bolin is being helped off the ice. A big hard hit in the corner. 
that knock bowl, and you can see he can't put any weight on his left foot, his left ankle. And there's the hit. Did he get kicked? Did he fall down? It's hard to see on that, but clearly right off the bat, he was in trouble. He looks down. He might have been kicked there by Cassian. And then nice read by Cassian, a little spin off in front. Mason Raymond loses body position, and Cassian gets the quick release. The referees have the option if they really feel a player is in peril. Actually, it's Franzen, and if a player's in peril, you can blow it down. Yeah. And Bolin didn't, he didn't move for a number of seconds, and then he tried to get up on his own and make his way to the bench with one leg. Watch the kick right there. The left foot came up, and I think that's exactly what it was. Cassian's toe went into the left leg of Bolin. He went right down. That's huge for Toronto, just as they started to get close to having their lineup back together. They're Bozak away from pretty much the lineup they wanted, especially up front. And Tyler Bozak is out, and who knows how long David Boland is gone, but he's an important center iceman for them. 2-0 Vancouver. Burrows with a shot block. Another shot by Higgins just wide of the net. Chris Tannen holds the puck in. Burrows alone in front of the net. Higgins couldn't get him the puck. You saw that puck deflect twice off Cody France, and Cassian gets the goal. A little bit of a stick, a late stick by Raymond. Centering pass off the post as the Canucks come close to just putting this away. And Toronto needs a comeback here now. They did it in the first period about halfway through, and in the second period, apparently, they need it again because the Canucks are pressing hard. Well, one thing that the Leafs have done early in this season is survive the little pushes, and here was a great chance behind as Santorelli does a cross crease, and Higgins somehow not able to get it. Nice job of Kadri coming back. Look at the left skate of Cassian. Just comes up a bit, and yeah, it does get him right at the side of the ankle on Dave Bowler. You can tell when Bolin went off, he knew he was in trouble. It looked dangerous. It looked painful. It's not a player who's about to come back. Well, what a big loss that is with Bozak already out in the Leafs lineup and Bolin playing such a significant role. There's a McLaren with a sharp angled shot. Fourth line shift here for Toronto. And he's part of it. So you need Kadri to step up his game, and you just saw a good chance that, uh, that Kadri didn't have his defensive responsibility. You only need him now. Cassian for Richardson is the scoring play that gives Vancouver a 2 nothing lead. The exit has a left-handed stick as his is broken. So, <laughs> so he goes, he to, goes to the backhand. That's a smart play. He's got Daniel's stick right now. Yeah, here's broke Daniel. Replaced it for him as the Leafs put some pressure on. Dion for the Joffrey Leupold trying to take advantage of BX. They charge at him. McClellan to the front of the net. And he couldn't get the puck to Fraser McLaren. Henrik Sedin with Brian Kessler. The center shoots the puck in. And trouble averted. And uh, no, it's not because this is going to be an icing call, even though that was a slow roller. And that line that was tired won't be able to change. At least they'll be able to get sticks. The only way I could tell these guys apart. But here it is, there's the exchange. Henrik to Daniel, in front of that, so smart. Winger, give it to a centerman, yep. right? To do the down low dirty work. After Henrik had already given BX the hits. But did you think the hit on Boland looked a little bit like the Cook hit on Erickson? Yeah, do you guys think that that should be an illegal hit because he comes up? Well, the one thing, you, you always go in with that aggressiveness, but that was the issue with, you watch Matt Cook, that left leg up, bit eerily similar, wasn't it? I know the leg comes up the pin. This, by the way, is a 30-second timeout for John Tortorella and the Vancouver Canucks because of the icing call and the tired line. Another look at Cassian, his left leg come up on the left leg of Bolin. Look at Bolin, look back. He knew immediately, didn't put any pressure on it. Watch the remaining pairs skate to programs inspired by the Winter Olympics and an all-new Battle of the Blades tomorrow at 8 on CBC TV. Top line for the Leafs, Nazem Kadri, Phil Kessel, James Van Riemsdyk on the ice. Now here's a big challenge for the Leafs' top line now. Daniel Sedin dumps the puck in. So Vancouver wants the change here because of that icing call. But thanks to a Kessler faceoff win with some help from Ryan Stanton, they get the team. Chris Tanev stood up. Alex Burrell's trying to hit the trainer. Mike Santarelli, screenshot blocked by Morgan Riley, out of play. That's the one thing that the 
Toronto Maple Leafs have been able to survive early on. You, you look at their stats and too many shots against, not enough shots for, but they've been able to battle. Part of it is the fact that their special teams have been good, their penalty killing has been solid, their power play has been opportunistic. Now you see Randy Carlisle on the bench looking, what do I do without 63 as the mainstay in the middle? You'll see a lot more of this guy, Jay McClement, having to take some of that role. Takes a big face off, so you might have to play against the City. Right now, he's out with Mason Raymond and David Clarkson. He's got to get that energy back, though, don't they? That offensive push. They started the second like they started the first. They hadn't had a shot on that. Yeah, now. same game. They played it over again. Now they cycle out of the corner and misplay to take card. You know, it's like on the bench, though. You get a bad goal against and you lose a key player, too. That, that's a tough combination. David Clarkson turns, fires, Luongo makes the save, and he covers up for a faceoff. But they can shorten up the bench easily tonight. The Leafs don't play again until next Friday. They have lots of time off after this game. Let's take a look at how the Sedins have been a big factor already, and as a result, you play a physical game against them. It's the only way to eliminate them. You are not going to outskill them, but they also play on the physical side of the puck, as Cordarella had mentioned, and stars that are physical, when you're on a team with them, you love that style of play because they, they give their body up for some sacrifice. Morgan Riley couldn't knock the puck down. Here's a chance for Higgins. Burrell's trying to get loose. Higgins shoots, he scores! Chris Higgins, 3-0 Vancouver. Well, coaches will often tell you, you have to be ready at face-offs in every zone. Here's why. A one draw turns into an odd man rush. Riley can't handle the puck rolling. And this is a good, quick shot by Higgins. You can see Reimer back in his net inside the blue paint there, but that's an excellently placed shot. Glenn, you probably had a perfect view. Perfect view, but it's a puck that definitely should have been stopped. The wrist shot, and it isn't off the post and in. And this is getting away from the Toronto Maple, Leaf, Maple Leafs, as so many games here over the last 10 years have. They've been outscored 21 to 9 in the last five visits here. And here we go. Colton Orr and Tom Sestito in the heavyweight class. Round two. Round one, they never were able to go. Not sure what purpose yeah. this serves except no. for the fact that they didn't round, get the fight the last time. Round and around we go. It's like both guys want to stop and linesmen aren't jumping in. So you want to fight? We're going to make you fight. We go from one extreme to the other and now they both go down. Well, you could have expected this, and let's see how it started. Started with a thunderous hit from Orr. Picks up some speed, here we go, bang! That's a hard hit on a skilled player, and the gloves are off before you know it. Now, we've seen some strange things tonight. We've seen the Sedins kill penalties. Hey, we've seen Phil Kessel have his second fight of his career. Here he comes back to the bench. The bench is all tapping. Well done, Phil. He just kind of shrugs and laughs and says, it's not much of a fight. Last fight was in December of 2009, so it has been a weird night. It's like a badge of honor to get five minutes for that. But it's hard to imagine why. So Sestito and Orr go off. Five on five continues, three nothing at Vancouver. Paul Ranger back for the puck. That's a delayed offside. Cassian comes at Ranger. And he'll be surrounded by Leafs. That's a play where Cassian 
apparently didn't realize it was no. delayed. His, his teammates did. They all backed off. Archibald Bach backed off. And Where do you think the animosity has come from tonight? The fact that Vancouver's just saying not in our house anymore? I, I think so. I, I think you look at the fact that uh, all across Canada, all across the West, you come in. I remember playing in Edmonton, and it was the same thing. You had all kinds of Maple Leaf jerseys. You could see a smattering here. And the fact that the Leafs come in, they're 2-0 and on the Western Swing. They're first in the East. And I think Vancouver's really trying to make a statement here. And it's been a pretty solid statement-type game in their own building. So article in the paper today, are the Leafs the best team in Canada? Yeah. And for years, the best team in Canada has always been Vancouver. And so, yeah, if you're reading those headlines, I'll show you who the best team in Canada is. I mean, Leafs have 20 points. Vancouver has 19. You're telling me the one point makes them the best? Here's Chris Higgins who dumps the puck in. Vancouver has outshot Toronto 22 to 12. More importantly, leads three to nothing. A turnover. Higgins has the puck. He shoots. He just missed getting his second. Another shot by Burroughs is just wide. Higgins holds the puck in. Burroughs is out front. The centering pass stayed in behind the net. Morgan Riley battling there. Leafs can't get the puck into the middle. Mike Santarelli makes Kadri chase him. Higgins shoots and wisely stopping the play is James Reimer. And the TV timeout couldn't come at a better time for Randy Carlisle who needs to get his team playing on CBC's Hockey Night in Canada. Hockey Night in Canada for Vancouver on Pavel Bure night. Yesterday, Pavel Bure was hanging around in the training room and one by one, all of these players who'd never played with him yeah. but had seen all the videos were poking their nose and uh, see if they could shake hands with the Rockets. It's something that hasn't happened around Vancouver a lot, but Craig and Glenn, you can appreciate it from being around players like Mark Messi. Absolutely. I've never seen a player who can keep his hands moving at the same speed that his legs were moving and make something happen. I mean, he was an electrifying goal scorer. Well, very few players can sell seats. He was one of them. And when he was selling seats, you know what we were saying on the other side? Retreat. Because he came at you with a ton of speed. Scored twice on you, Heels. Do you remember both of them? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's a long list that I contributed to their career and their pocketbooks. There's a puck out of play into the netting, uh, stopping play. Most players, don't you think, have to slow down when they get the puck? Yeah. Calvary never did. And, and I think Don talked about Bobby Orr going through the middle of the ice as you see the deflection there. But uh, I think one thing about Pavel, that darting motion, being able to have those explosive steps and being able to control the puck at that high speed. I mean, a lot of guys can skate without the puck and make things happen, but around the net, he made so many incredible moves. Tough for goaltenders to stop. The Nuts have possession off the draw again. Got a block shot or pass. Allows Fraser McLaren to get to center. He's out here with Lupul, Trevor Smith, Joffrey Lupul. Short side shot, Ryan Stanton cleared that away and a big collision along the boards. But Darren Archibald got the puck out to center. Yes, he dumps the puck back in. He knows guys are going to be looking for him, and Fraser McLaren was and got him. And Fraser McLaren wants Zach Cassian, and he'll get a whole face full of several Vancouver Canucks. And McLaren was going to get an initial penalty on this play, but there may be more. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of it at the end. Without question, it's initial, but Stan came in, Cassian came back. Cassian was smart enough when he dumped that puck and he was looking around. He knew that somebody might be coming after him. Zach's a pretty interesting player. He has this wonderful skill set that sometimes he teases coaches and he gets some ice time and the next game he disappears. And you can see the stick come up and hit him in the chin there and that's where he went down. They're having a look to see if this is a four-minute penalty. Is is he bleeding? I believe he is. Double minor for high stick. So things get worse for Toronto now. Well, it looks like Stanton's going to get one, though, so what okay. was a four-minute, it'll probably only turn into a two-minute power play here. Stanton, who came into the with the gang to help out Cassian against Fraser McLaren, gets a penalty, so it is just a two-minute power play for Vancouver. Now, this was all set almost before the shift. When you look at the Orr fight, as soon as Orr started fighting Sestito, then it was McLaren who was on the ice at the same time looked at the Vancouver bench and delivered the message. We're going to go the next time we're out and true to form. It happened. The man of his word. Some 
confusion here on they're calling Stanton uh, was out of Stanton. the penalty. They're giving Cassie in the penalty. They got the wrong <laughs> man. Although they're having a discussion between the officials. No. One overruled the other. Wes McCauley thought that it was Cassie who was getting the extra. And he was overruled saying no. Stanton came in as well and gave it to him. Stanton is incarcerated again. Power play features the Sedins and Kessler. Jason Garrison to Dan Hughes, and they get the draw. Garrison passes off. Return pass, Hughes. Kessler screening, centering, tip towards the net. Didn't get to the goaltender. That classic tip from the slot. So many teams are using that now. The Sedins have used it forever. That pass into the slot, the little tip. As Dan Hughes to Daniel this time. Another leap is headed for the dressing room. It's Paul Ranger. Henrik Sedin. And Garrison and Pete. Around the outside, Daniel. Kessler's in front. Henrik, backdoor play. Garrison went to the net. The pass goes to Daniel. Push to the ice. Little back pass. Played to the blue line. Hamus. Henrik City. Daniel to Kessler. And his stick was checked by Dion Fedor. Just in the nick of time. Well, some good puck movement again, but a nice, as you mentioned, positional play by Fedor. You know he's going to log a lot of ice time coming down the stretch. And one thing, you have to follow that quick puck movement. Gets a little bit body on Daniel, but then gets back to the front of the net. Knows exactly where the puck's going to come down. A little give and go down low, and then a nice stick that Kessler can't find the open net. Enough was there first. Here's a chance for Mason Raymond, shorthanded. He's out with James Van Riemsdyk, and they'll rag the puck back to center. Gardner and Cody Franson. They'll send the puck deep. Mason Raymond jumped right to it. Got there before Hughes Couldn't cut to the front of the net. Ryan Kessler stepped in front. Now the Canucks are away. The Sedins flanking Kessler. He tried to get through and took. And Wiensdijk is back. Three Canucks converge upon him. Jake Gardner gets the puck up the middle. Knocked out of the air by Jason Garrison. And that allows the Canucks to stay on the attack. Henrik to Daniel and back. Kessler ready in front. Hamuse on the boards, a centering pass didn't get through. Hamuse, Garrison shoots, Reimer the save. Rebound gathered in by Daniel Sedin. Henrik, Garrison, Henrik again, the slap pass tip, but Daniel got it. Now the pass is back off the stick to Garrison. Hamuse, rink wide, Henrik, Garrison, Henrik again, Daniel's in the slot, and he gets the pass. Garrison, one timer, stop. And the puck is cleared away to the end boards. Cody Franson clears it down the ice just as the penalty expires. Phil Kessel was serving it. He's back on. Hey, Vancouver with a 3 to nothing lead failed on that power play, but they kept the puck in the attacking zone for all of it. James Van Riemsdyk for Kadri out of his reach. Alex Edler up the boards, turned it over. Phil Kessel couldn't get a shot. And he corrals the bouncing puck and plays it to center. Leon put up to Morgan Ryan. Halfway through the second period, 3-0 Vancouver. Still no Paul Ranger on the bench, so... Down the defense, down, down the center. Defenseman, yeah. And only one shot for the Leafs this period. So it's bad news all around. An offside call stops play. The shot's 25-12, Toronto, Vancouver, 3-0. Canucks on the scoreboard at Hockey United Canada. You know, new coach, new approach, and Jay Garrison was not used on the first power play with Elaine Vignon, but, well, hey, put a new coach in, and yeah, he's got a tough shot. Like, this thing, you can't control the rebound when you've got that kind of velocity. Not once, but on two different occasions where Reimer has to make a great save, but both of them with rebounds. And here's the night in a nutshell for the Leafs. Lots of frustration. Only one shot so far in this second period. And Randy Carlisle up and down the bench all through that timeout, trying to get his team to play. You know, get on your toes, get off of your heels. The game is still within reach. Got a short bench by attrition right now. No Bolin, no Ranger. This has been a good line for Vancouver as Francis fell. Higgins, Santarelli, and Burroughs in after the puck. Edler fell down. Chris Tanev. Chris Higgins. Screen set up. 
Higgins cross ice. Edler shoots easy save for Reimer and he kicked the puck to Kessel who cleared it. Every shift looks like a power play right now. Chris Tanner for Alex Burrows. Higgins tips the puck in, hits for the bench and a change. Carl Gunnarsson. Archibald took a run at him and got a hit in. Kadri to center. Lupo lost the puck in his feet. Now he plays it to Kessel. That's offside. Gardner was ahead of the play. All right, Simmer, I want you to break this one down for me. Uh, if you're going to play in the defensive zone, would you recommend as a coach when the puck goes into the zone where, watch Kadri, there he is, chasing behind the net to a player who is in not a dangerous spot. Uh, you look at the development of Kadri, that was it early on. He started with the responsibility down low, took the early penalty against Kessler, and the Vancouver Canucks scored. And that's the challenge of being an everyday NHL center iceman. The, the hardest challenge is those down low reads. And it's on a night where the possessional territorial play has been in the Vancouver Canucks' favor. At times, you get chasing the tail. You saw Colton Orr and Tom Sestito have been released from captivity, so there's more players available, especially for Toronto, with a few players short. David Clarkson. Can't chip and chase. Ryan Stanton was there to knock the puck away. Bounce to center. Gunnarsson in a little trouble. Passing an Archibald right there, but he made the play. Mason Raymond is back. Got by Archibald. Gets himself open. His pass tipped just wide by Jay McClemmon. What the Leafs badly need here besides shots is a goal. They get right back in the game. Mason Raymond. Because they can score. Gardner with his shot. That's off Luongo. Up into the air, off the end board. It fell right in front of Clarkson. He didn't know where it was, but it fell in front of him. Here comes McClendon. Won't let the Canucks out. Clarkson to the front of the net. Push to the ice. Penalty on the play. And the Maple Leafs will get a power play. Uh, Clarkson be wise to just step back there. End of a good shift offensively. The kind of territorial play we were talking about. Haven't seen a lot of it definitely in this period. But a great shift by this trio. And Clarkson finds himself in alone. And Stanton with the little hook. Watch the kick out of the corner. Clarkson trying to keep it alive. Richardson tries to poke it ahead. Clarkson gets underneath. And watch the stick to the hands right there. Call was made, and then Bieksa followed through with the hit. Here's where a power play could really change the momentum of the game. In the first period, it was a big hit by Colton Orr, and then a power play that didn't score but got the Leafs some momentum. I was just saying, James Van Riemsdyk wasn't on the wing the last shift. Lupel took his place, but here on the power play, he's right back with Kadri and Kessler. Remember, Boland was on the first power play in the first period. Kadri comes in here. It's Jake Gardner at the left point and Morgan Riley at the right to start this power play. Now, is that deflected? It was, it was it deflected? Yes. The well, rule immediately was deflected, so no penalty. Randy Carlisle doesn't think so. He but wants to fly on three badly. And the worst part is Glenn Healy now faceoff comes outside, too. And you you see, be the judge. All, all the referees, all together, it's like synchronized hand clapping to let everybody know that it was deflected. That's a tough call to make. We well, all made the same call. That could have been a game changer, couldn't it? Long five on three to get an opportunity to get back in the game. Instead, the power play chase back to center. Van Riemsdyk from Kessel moves in. Kessel along the boards. Cody Franson is the only man at the blue line. Settles the puck down, passes off. Dion Phillips come on. Now he faces the net. Van Riemsdyk screening. The shot went wide short side. Kessel. Good stick by Ryan Kessler. Deflected a pass out to center, and the Leafs have to retreat. But back they come. Van Riemsdyk, and the play is just offside. And Kessel was mad about the last one. He won't be happy about this one either. Yeah, Kessel trying to force the pass through. He's going to argue his case there about the offside. I'm not sure you're going to win it. I've had many of those, and never do you win. Trying to time it. Oh, he's a little stutter step. He thought that he was able to keep the toe drag. So it's pretty clear what Vancouver likes to do in front of the net. There's J James Van Riesdijk. You don't get tied up with him. You just stay in front of him. We see it with Tanif. We see it with Hamhoos. Both players do the same thing. You get tied up with him and you start trying to push and shove. 
it's almost like a double screen for your goaltender. I wonder if uh, John, John Tortorella showed the video of Dan Girardi when he wanted to teach him how to do that. Not likely. Morgan Riley and a rush here for Toronto to try and get set up on this power play. Joffrey Lupin, David Clarkson's in front of the net. Jake Gardner with some room. That's taken away. He passes off. Lupo shoots off Mwongo and wide of the net. Mason Raymond gathers the puck in. And at the blue line, Gardner can't handle a bouncing puck. And now he's in trouble against Brad Richardson. Puck is loose. Clarkson's got it. Back come the Leafs. They're three on two as they gain the line. Morgan Riley, side of the net. Lupo tipped it wide. Gardner stepping in his garrison. Too many leaps. Lupo walks out front. His backhander stopped by Luongo. He's trying to cover it and can't. And the bodies are down and reaching out as Luongo and he smothers the puck with his trapper. I don't know if officially yeah, another shot was added on, but the one thing the Leafs power play hasn't been able to do is get pucks to the net. And Lupo was in tight. And instead of trying to get a rebound, it was a pass shot. So he just tries to tip it. I think at this point, when you haven't been able to establish many shots, throw it on net and allow a guy like Lupo on the doorstep to hunt down a rebound. Well, particularly that last rush, Simmer, because the Canucks had a bad change. The Sedin line's coming on, so you get yourself a four on two and you get no shot. Chris Higgins jumped ahead and managed to knock the puck to center with a dozen seconds to go in the penalty. Van Riemsdijk, Hadry, and Kessel move back in. The Leafs have some depth now with scores on two power play units. But they haven't been able to score here, and shorthanded Chris Higgins skates the puck to center with Brian Kessler. Tried to head for the net, turned it over. Penalty's over. Here comes Bill Kessel on the attack, looking for someone to pass to. Finds Kadri. He couldn't control the puck, but up was there as well. Kessel. Kadri's in front. The pass. It escaped. Ten have blocked it. Franson holds the puck here. Van Reems back up front. Kessel stopped by Luongo. That might be his best of the game and an important time with the Leafs trying to get back into it. Still 3-0 Vancouver on CBC's Hockey Night in Canada. Well, you got to give Vancouver credit. They have been stifling in the defensive zone, and this is probably the best chance Kessel has had. Look at his reaction after the save is made. The best save for Luongo. Canucks are all back. Big save. And Kessel thought about it for a second. I'm going to... No, no, no. The sticks are way too expensive. Made in a road trip. You might not have any left. And it's tough. Canucks have given the Leafs nothing. Clear the buck to center once again. Paul Rangers back in the game. So is Colton Orr as he comes in with Fraser McLaren and Trevor Smith, the fourth line back together again. And out against the Sedins. Jason Garrison. Aerial pass to center. Gunnarsson knocked it down. Oh! Fraser McLaren. Threw his man into the boards as Daniel Sedin. Play goes on. A penalty is coming up as Alexander Edwin plays the puck to Trevor Smith. And the play is stopped and a crowd will gather here. And in terms of fisticuffs, this is a mismatch. Yeah, Toronto's fourth line on the there. ice against the Sedins and Ryan Kessler. This is one where Edler went to play the puck and turned at the wrong time and McLaren followed right through. He knew it right away. You can see the reaction of McLaren immediately as he was able to dig in as Edler stopped up watch the play he knows he's coming there's the engagement but then the follow through into the boards as Edler goes head first so he's trying to counter hit but he's just not strong enough against a huge man and he's a big boy and distance is such you just can't get your hands up freaking him out you, know, you almost have to put that player on your hip pocket and ride him into the boards. Now the Leafs have got a uh, two-minute penalty for yapping at the bench. So we got a five-on-three now. Five-on-three. I thought they would have been Fraser McLaren's waving the white towel in the uh, penalty box right now, a la Roger Nielsen. That'll cost him some money. He just put the towel down as Phil Kessel comes over. There's Fraser McLaren waving the white towel. They'd be mad, I guess, because 
Alexander Edler knew that the hit was coming, and it was right at the bench. I think it's the right call to only make it a two-minute penalty. I mean, it wasn't a dangerous board. It wasn't the kind of play for a suspension. But now with the chirping, you got a five-on-three, and instead of the second line that was out there for the five-on-four, John Tortorella goes with his top guns. At three to nothing late stages of the second period, Garrison, Edler, the Sedins, and Ryan Kessler. Dave McClement, Carl Gunnarsson, Dion for the upper forward and two defensemen for Toronto. And a fortunate bounce for Toronto allows Gunnarsson to clear the puck. Power play has scored once tonight at five on four. Hendrick Sedin into the attacking zone. Daniel takes over. Round the outside to Hendrick. He lets the puck go to Alex Hedrick. Kessler looks to see where he is. He's screening in front. Turns for a deflection, and the puck is intercepted and could have, couldn't quite get it out. Edler, Hendrick, Daniel missed the net. That doesn't often happen. Ryan Kessler, Jason Garrison. Daniel parked in front, Edler fake. Garrison, Hendrick, Garrison shoots, and Reimer makes the save and makes sure there's no rebound. A nice job by Reimer looking through the body of... Daniel Sedin in front. Tough play. The penalty killer's dead tired. Had a couple chances to get away. Look at the battle in front. A jump by Daniel and a nice job. Reimer take a quick peek behind him. But he was in good position, square to the shot, and able to hold on. Kessler got the draw from Jay McCunnett. Henrik. Daniel's on the other side of the net. Alex Edler from the blue line. Daniel, Kessler's in front, Henrik now at the right post. Alex Edler, Garrison closes in. Henrik, Garrison, Daniel, Edler misfired. Garrison shoots, that's off a skate wide. Alex Edler back to the attack. Daniel Sedin to Henrik. Ranger and Franson at the posts. Ryan Kessler. Edler shoots a weak one and an easy save for James Reimer, who absorbs the shot. Down to 30 seconds in the five on three. Well, one thing that the Leafs did a pretty good job of is take away the shooting lane. They weren't able to get the passing lane tough on a five on three, but watch each time there's a chance for a shot. There's a white sweater in the way. Take care of it there. Another one there that stops the one timer and then through the body, France and able to get his skate on it. And a pretty solid job defensively by the Leafs penalty killer. Well, the one thing that stands out to me there, guys, the way the Vancouver Canucks moved that puck, that was 11 straight passes without Toronto touching the puck. I know they're minus two guys, but 11 straight. And it's all about detail, right? You know, everyone's paying attention to their own jobs. Watch Kessler. He knows he's got to get in front of the goalie. He checks his feet, make sure I'm out of the blue paint. If I'm in, they're probably not going to allow it. That kind of detail that leads to a really good power play for Vancouver. I don't know how their power play has not been as good as it could be, but there's a good example of what it can be. So Leafs took their 30-second timeout, so both teams have used theirs in the hockey game. Can Murdoch overcome his fears to solve the case? Tara Spencer Nairn guest stars in an all-new Murdoch Mysteries Monday at 8 on CBC TV. And so the same combatants stay on the ice of the five on three after a short rest. Gunnarsson, Henrik Sedin go after the puck. Daniel is there out front. Ender had to kick the puck up, so he played it back. Jason Garrison. Alex Edler, nobody in front right now. Daniel. Edler, now Kessler has the screen. Henrik. Edler shoots. Nice save by James Reimer, and he stops play with six seconds to go with the two-man advantage. Once again, it's the Vancouver Canucks not getting the shot they want. They've been closed off down on that cross crease, so instead they look to the high slot. But if you're going to give somebody the shot, to me, I'd give Edler that if I'm the least penalty killers. The lesser of Eagles, you don't allow Daniel Sedin that one-timer, you don't let Kessler in there, or nothing cross crease from Henrik. Another Leaf player off to the dressing room, this time Dion Phaneuf. He's at the 15-minute mark in this game, too, so he's had a long night already. Late in the five-on-three. It's over. Two players coming back on. Santorelli 
And Kevin Bieksa missed the pass and bounced off his stick. So five on five again. The Leafs survived the five on three, a full two minutes. And still down three to nothing. Mike Santarelli turns away from Paul Ranger. Centering pass, Pearls is right there. Can't push it by James Reimer. Chris Higgins. Three Canucks below the goal line. Higgins trying to cycle back. Santarelli gets the puck. Leaves the puck at the blue line for Kevin Bieksa. To the net, Reimer stops it before Burroughs can put it in. And had there been any garbage around the net, Burroughs was there for the puck is stop. Well, we've seen a lot of flash and dash from the Sedin brothers, but you don't see much of this. Good physical hit by Daniel Sedin, and Phaneuf makes his way to the tunnel holding his arm. And he just came back, Glenn, to the right of there, and good news for the Maple Leafs. Well, if you could get a goal here, you get some momentum from a five-on-three kill. Make this a hockey game for the third. Shots are now 30 to 14 in favor of Vancouver. Another 30-shot night against for Toronto. The formula's not quite working as well. No. Richardson took a hit, kept the puck in. Only San Jose has scored more goals than Toronto, so they've been able to get themselves back in games and put this one with the players that they have, six players in double digits in scoring. How many teams with that sort of depth of scoring, but they need to see it here. No, and on a night like tonight where Roberto Luongo hasn't really been tested, the best chance was that Kessel chance with the trying to go five hole earlier on in this period. But it's been a pretty neat and tidy game so far for number one at the other end. Finally, Roberto put October behind him. He hasn't been very good in uh, October. Didn't start great in this one, but his October finish was pretty good. Well, he gets a goal less per game, save percentage up. And that would put him right back in the running as, as the incumbent to be on Team Canada. In fact, there's a dozen players that are prospective Olympians in this game tonight from four different countries. This would be a good one to scout. Here's David Clarkson. One man back. Drops the puck off. Gardner ended up getting the shot. Luongo made the save. I don't think he was the intended receiver on the drop pass, but he ended up getting the shot. No, and Clarkson had a chance to take the puck wide and allow players to come. Instead, he cut through, made the drop pass. At the end of the day, it's going to be Edler with the slash. And a Vancouver penalty puts Toronto on the power. Play. There's the slash that actually broke the stick of Clarkson in his hands. I haven't heard much on David Boland. Have you, Cassie? Jim, yes, I have. I'm outside the Maple Leafs dressing room right now. Dave Boland will not return, and it is a leg laceration. So once again, eerily similar to what happened to Eric Carlson when hit by Matt Cook. Well, here's your chance to get in the game right now. So the intensity for this Leaf power play has to get ramped up. You've been outshot, you've been outscored, but you got a chance to get yourself right back into the game of the late power play. Kadri Van Riemsdyk and Kessel. Phaneuf and Franson, they get the draw. Franson has the puck. Side of the net, Kadri and Buckman. Reeves died. Great save by Luongo. Great play by Van Reeves It was just an equally good save. Dan Andrews took a thunderous hit. Couldn't get the puck outside of the net. Kadri reaching for the puck, couldn't get a hold of it. He throws it back to Dion Phaneuf. Watch to the blue line, Franson into Phil Kessel. Van Riemsdijk screening, but enough shot that hit Kadri and went to the corner. Richardson and Franzen go after the puck. Intercepted this Tannen, and he moved the puck to Santarelli. He can't get it out against Dion Fanuf. He might get a second chance. Tannen trying to help out. Santarelli turned and fired the puck down the ice. Scrambling to change in this long change of the penalty killers. Tanev couldn't get off. Kevin BX is fresh. Rink wide to Chris Higgins. Fanuf stands up on him. Vancouver Giant Junior Cody Franson to Mason Raymond. Kessel was headed off and he dumps the puck in. Clarkson in after it. The executed it by Clarkson and Fanuf. One last rush before this period comes to an end. Jake Gardner with Morgan Riley on the fly through center. Joffrey Lupo goes wide, shoots at the outside of the post. Running out of time, Mason Raymond. 
Saw Lupel, but he ran out of time, and this power play will carry over for 31 seconds into the third period. Before we go, one more look at this wonderful save by Roberto Luongo. Look at the aggressive penalty kill by the Vancouver Canucks, but three quick passes create the chance. Luongo just gets enough of his glove on it. An excellent hand, forehand, backhand. And Reinsteig almost got it up and over, but an excellent acrobatic save. 12-5 with the shots in favor of Vancouver in that second period. They get goals from Zach Cassian and Chris Higgins and have a 3-0 lead on Pavel Bure night in Vancouver on CBC's Hockey Night in Canada. Back inside Rogers Arena in Vancouver and it's interesting to note Vancouver Canucks are always sort of ahead of everybody else as far as technology goes and they're wearing these special heart rate monitors. They're a little bit more advanced than your regular heart rate. Obviously they, they measure the recovery, they measure the load that players are having on the stress of their bodies during a game. They even can measure the stress on a body when a player takes a hit. They download them to a computer at the end of every game, at the end of every practice, and it's a way for the medical staff to make sure that the players aren't getting too fatigued. Jim? I think uh, as a broadcasting entity, we should be allowed to put them on the coaches. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of variance in the course of a game, yeah. isn't it? I want to know what Randy Carlisle's is like tonight. His team starts the third period on a power play for a half a minute. Dion Phaneuf, Cody Francis. Back to Dion Phaneuf, a tip through. Phaneuf couldn't get the one-timer, and Francis missed the pass. Dan Hamuse comes to the puck. He had a stick lifted. Phil Kessel, Nazem Kadri to the net and into the corner. Francis, Kadri left the puck there. Hamuse couldn't quite cure it. Penalty's over. Edler's back on. Five on five again with the Canucks up by three. Nazem Kadri. Phaneuf from Francis. And in deep, Chris Tanev is back. Kadri came barging in and knocked the puck loose. Hamuse fanned on it. So Phaneuf holds the puck in. For Kadri in behind the net, a good stick by Chris Tanev. Poked the puck around, and the Canucks are able to clear it. They like a change here. Leafs are going to need one as well. A pass intended for Kessel, who is intending to leave the ice, ends up in an icing call, and that whole group will have to stay. Now you talked about heart rates, Cassie, and here's something that'll get your heart rate up. It's right off the draw. Kadri, Kasser, look at the battle that they've got. Good little cross check, and that's going to foreshadow our close-up because there has been no love in this game. Stay tuned. I'm on the edge of my seat, Pebble. <laughs> Hot shot and a nice save by James Reimer off Ryan Stanton. Henrik Sedin getting up gingerly there. A lot of battles off of face-offs. Canucks uh, have won 57% of those. Here's what you see is cross-check from behind, backing in. Phaneuf plays him hard, and Sedin slow to get up. That's why it's hard to imagine that he's played 645 consecutive games, and he just keeps getting up. A lot of discussion off this face-off. You know there's always a set play offensively. And the Leafs send Jay McClemmon in. Henrik Sedin beats him. Burrows. Daniel to Burrows. Hooked it back at the net. And James Reimer made the save. Alex Burrows back with the Sedins here. And there's going to be a penalty because Burrows got a stick in the face in front of the net. He's checking for damage, and so is Frederick Lequier, the referee. Well, the discussion off the faceoff was with Clarkson and McClement, who was going to take it. You can see McClement tried to get it a backhand out and a little bit of a slow developing play. Daniel keeps it alive and right there is the stick by Lupel trying to lift the stick of Burroughs and he missed. Well, this is the fifth power play for Vancouver and you heard Mason Raymond talk about staying out of the box. They haven't been able to do it. A lot of jawing down there as Clarkson going at it with Kessler right now as Clarkson gets off to the bench. As you mentioned, Glenn, it's been all night like that, hasn't it? And a frustrating game for the Leafs to play because, you know, they've scored lots of goals. And, you know, when you look at tonight, where they've shot their pucks from, it has not been good. The sense that Vancouver's done a real good job of keeping everything to the outside. Very few players have had scoring chances. And these are frustrating games to play. Number one power play is on for Vancouver in an attempt to really put this away and maybe straighten out the power play that has scored once tonight. 
Nestler in the Sedins, Harrison in hand use of the points. A good battle, and the Canucks win it to get the puck. Ham Hughes to the front of the net. Kessler tips the puck to Henrik Sedin. Garrison back to Henrik. Daniels at the side of the net. Try to pass. Jay McClemon blocked it. Henrik gets it back. Little back pass. And at the blue line, Garrison holds the puck in. Daniel Sedin. Ham Hughes had the puck skip on him. And he's chased by Nikolai Kuhlman and pushed to the ice, and it opened the Vancouver bench. Jason Garrison. Alexander Endler takes over and he'll delay while his teammates change. Up the middle, Burroughs couldn't quite take the pass. Paul Ranger, first man back, with some help from Van Riemsdyk. And he swatted the puck away from Mason Raymond. And Alex Endler. Endler got a hit in on Mason Raymond. Puck is loose for James Van Riemsdyk. Endler close to hooking him. Good battle here. It's Kevin Bieksa and James Van Riemsdyk. And they're still at it as the puck gets to center. Higgins drop pass to Edler. Into Santarelli. And up the ice. Bieksa just gave Van Riemsdyk another shot. He's without a glove as he went after Edler. Some frustration showing from James Van Riemsdyk. Burrows off the boards. Edler takes a shot. It hits Santarelli and bounced to Van Riemsdyk. He sends Mason Raymond away, and Raymond goes for a skate, killing the penalty, now sends the puck down the ice. Uh, fortunate for Van Riemsdyk, the one thing you don't want to be doing, killing the penalty without a glove. You have to block shots and play hard. He was fortunate to have that puck cut to him, and he was able to get rid of it. The penalty's over, Lupo's back on. Five on five here. Here Kuhleman has his protective gear on his foot, has a strap off, now he has to go off. Zach Cassian with a shot that was blocked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jay McClendon moving in on Dan Hamhuis. Off a skate. Richardson on the back check collects the puck. 200 feet away. He's got Archibald and Phaneuf going at it. Lots of that away from the play. A little bit of old time officiating too. Letting them play and letting them get their physical licks in as long as it's even. Stay tuned for my close up. Ah, there you go, Glenn. <laughs> You can hardly wait. If he was good in the pregame show, watch this. There's a shoot in by Alexander Edler. Morgan Riley is back, couldn't clear the puck. Sedin's Ryan Kessler back on. Clarkson, Cadry, and Kessel together for Toronto. From the blue line, Bieksa with a one-timer. Slowed up on a block. Ryan Kessler against Morgan Riley. Alexander Edler. D to D. No stick for David Clarkson as he came at BX and BX and knew that. Here's Henrik Sedin. Plays the puck in front. Daniel couldn't quite get to it. Nazem Kadri got there first. Good recovery by Kadri. Knew his partner didn't have a stick. Got inside and read that pass well. Kadri from Clarkson. Here comes Phil Kessel. Gets himself open against Daniel Sedin. He's stopped by Loongo, who hangs on. And some more extracurricular activity. Now you wonder at what point the officials are going to just take one because it seems not only every whistle, but at, in the middle of play, you've seen a lot of it. A little crisscross that opens up a scene for Kessel. And Kessel again trying to go five hole on the Wongo can't find it. Now you talked about not playing with a glove while you're killing penalties. Here's another thing you don't want to do. End up behind the Vancouver net. This was a four on three up the ice. Tons of room. And these guys continued it for 100 feet. You mentioned Kuhleman and his protective gear on his feet. We know he missed 12 games with a broken bone, but that's one of the reasons the players don't like to wear them. They don't find them comfortable, and every once in a while the strap opens up, and pretty dangerous to play without the strap, and pretty tough to get back to the bench with one skate. I've heard them say they don't like the way the puck deflects off them, but I'm not sure that there is a uniform deflection yeah. off the foot. No. Mason Raymond. Colton Orr parked in front of the net. Hard pass to Ranger. Can't control it. Now he's in trouble. Alex Burrows with Chris Higgins. Burrows and Ranger with a good back check. Got his stick down. And then he put the puck over the glass. A great effort coming back after a bobbling puck gave Burrows the chance. And Ranger just trying to clear it under pressure. 
the initial pass was bouncing and Ranger couldn't get a hold of it. Burroughs does a nice job of taking it wide with some speed. France in there and a good recovery and this one just a flip. That look at the reaction of Ranger. Can't believe it. That just ruined your entire day. Well, we see the strength of Ranger. He's a pretty good skater and he does get back. That's just bad luck. First unit power play again. Henrik wins another draw. Dan Hanghuis. Daniel Sedin to Ryan Kessler quickly out front blindly and intercepted by Carl Gunnarsson. Kuhlman McClement. Gunnarsson in foot off on the penalty kill. Dan Hanghuis. Henrik Sedin to Ryan Kessler. They like that play with speed on the right side for Kessler to gain entry in the attacking zone. Now three Canucks gang the puck and get. Henrik Sedin to Dan Hanhuis. Back to Henrik across ice. Garrison. Lucky to get it back. Side of the net. Little back pass by Kessler. Nothing doing there. Henrik again around the outside. Henrik turns to the net. Passes off. Daniel Sedin. All sorts of choices here. He finds Hanhuis. Back to Daniel Sedin. Walks in and shoots in. Reimer without his stick. Absorbs that shot and stops playing. Well, you saw how far back Reimer was in his crease there. Without his stick, he's not really able to play out as aggressively. He can't stop any passes going cross crease. Here's why. Another set play of Kessler trying to put it across, and the stick gets caught up in the feet of his own man, McClement. So Reimer now forced to sit back. Bad feeling, I'm sure, Glenn. For sure. And, you know, Dominic Hasek was one of the first to drop a stick and then cover it with his blocker. At least the, one of the first that I can recall. That's the danger there. Drop the stick and you don't get puck. I like to see Reimer's heart rate. <laughs> Sedin's on the ice. Kessler. No and you're killing a penalty. No stick. And his second unit has been too bad tonight. Higgins and Santorelli with Alex Burrows. The makings of a pretty darn good line. And I think for John Tortorelli, he's seen his top line score on that first power play. Their first chance. His second and third lines have produced tonight. It's been a pretty good all-round effort for a team that's been relying on one line most of the time. Higgins, and typically the fourth line, if you didn't see him early, you don't see him tonight. Burrows to the blue line. The exit, Alex Edner. Screenshot, Reimer made the save. Mike Santorelli. Kevin Bieksa has Edler on the other side. Waiting for the screen. Takes the shot. Reimer the save. Burroughs couldn't get the rebound. Mason Raymond did. Penalty's almost over. Paul Gardner, his partner, set to come out of the penalty box. Jake Gardner, Paul Ranger back on. Vancouver's one for six with a man advantage now. They didn't get a power play goal tonight, but their numbers aren't getting any better. Up the middle, Brad Richardson with a shot into the glove of James Reimer. And he stops playing. I can't wait for this commercial to be over. And Glenn can do his close-up on Hockey Night in Canada. For a Hockey Night close-up for Subway restaurants, it's all yours, Glenn. Ah, from Russia with love. Remember how that start, the night started? Well, it got a little less fuzzy as the night went on. Kessel with his second fight of his career. Sestito and Orr, they get ready to have a tilt. Bowen has to leave the game with a foot injured, foot laceration. It's been that kind of night, I quit. It's been more a Gino Ojic night than a Pavel Bure night. Yeah, good point by you. There have been a lot of Ojic-like moments in the game. Gino for the uninitiated load. Shotgun for Pavel Bure in all those years, and there's another Toronto penalty. Joffrey Lupul's going off. Uh, It'll be a hit from behind on Chris Tanev, and this will be the seventh power play of the game for Vancouver. And you can see Lupo again. He, he's frustrated. We've seen so many of these where you're right in the zone two feet from the boards. Lupo arguing right off the bat. That's second one we've seen in this game. And the Canucks, as you said, seventh power play, far too many. We for talked about it in the hot stove. The general manager's meetings, there's been a number that players have tried to sell the call I'm not saying that one but they're definitely going to look at it because you can get a power play off of selling a call what does the coach do patch on the back well done that was good it's the integrity of the game though that's at stake 
Fowler plays are seven to two in Vancouver's favor tonight. That is one that the natural reaction for Lupul is he, he knew the position he was in. He thought he had taken the steps to not make it happen. In the end, he's back in the box again. Sedins and Kessler on the power play again. With Garrison and Hamhus, they're just going to keep trying it until they get it right. Why wouldn't you with the talent that they have? It's remarkable that their power play is near the bottom of the league. There's been lots of quick passing, but with the exception of the well-executed first goal, there hasn't been a lot where they've got it down in into the net and in a second and third chance on rebound. And lately, teams have taken away Garrison's big shot. Just leave you to the outside. A lot of nifty passing, but not penetrating to the net where you have to be. This time, Henrik carries the puck in. Daniel takes over. Henrik. Got Garrison across the ice. Kessler in front. And that dies on the stick of James Van Riemsdyk as he and Franzen force Henrik to give it up in the corner. Didn't take long to change the power play this time. There's Higgins races to center, gains the attacking line. Burrows and Santarelli with it. Kevin BX a bouncing puck. All he can do is kick it to the corner. And now the puck is cleared again. I think that last change was more about being a good teammate. You got a 3 nothing lead. The top line has been out there for a few. If you don't get something early, you get the other guys a chance to go. And James Reimer decides to cover up with Santarelli streaking towards the net. Well, the Vancouver Canucks went on that six-game road trip, and that was really a test, an early test for the John Tortorette, sorry, the seven-game. John Tortorella led Vancouver Canucks, and a successful one it was, and they've come back here and settled right back into their game. And so often you have some success on the road, maybe it doesn't translate back at home. The XL one-timer for Edler, and he's stopped by James Reimer as the Canucks continue, especially on the power play, to dominate the faceoffs. Imagine that animosity, Glenn, has settled down here a little bit with all the special teams. I think there's a point in the game when you realize that you're not going to win. And I think the Leafs are at that point now. Thoroughly dominated on the shot clock. Thoroughly dominated with regards to the number of penalties they've been taking. Let's get possession again, having outshot Toronto 39-17. It's almost like, you know, hey, we've won two on, uh, on the road. So, the third one, yeah, we don't win, it's not so bad. We got four or six. Why does that always happen in Vancouver? It's not the first time, that's for sure. Oh, there have been some wild nights in this building. I played in this building. We're up 5-1 with nine minutes left. We almost lost in regulation 6-5. Here's Kevin Bieksa with a one-timer rebound. Kessler had an open net, and he couldn't find the handle. Power play is over, but the... Canucks continue to have the puck. Vancouver one for seven with a man advantage. Edler. The exile watched by Jay McClemm. Kessler. Neon Fadov comes at him. Daniel City gets a second chance to make a pass and finds Henry. Trying to get away from Fadov and he does. Daniel. To Kessler. A little keep away going on right now. Hard pass and a good one. Alex Edler takes the shot and James Reimer stops playing. Nine minutes to go in the third period. Sedins and Kessler with another pretty good night and Ryan Kessler just about made it for another on Hockey Night in Canada. 41 shots on goal for Vancouver. This guy's got a quarter of them. Well, let's take a look where Vancouver's shots came from. Oh, no, no. These are where Edler's shots came from. You know, when you look at the number of shots the Maple Leafs are giving up, 43, 41, 38 last Saturday. You know, even in the Curtis Joseph days, even when the team was outshot and I was there to watch it, they were 17th in the league his first year, 21st his second, 17th his third year, and third his fourth year. It's never been as bad as this. These goaltenders have been hung out to dry on too many nights. An interesting week to watch the Leaf practices because they'll probably go home on a losing note, which leads to coaching moments, and they don't play again until Friday. Randy Carlisle will have their full attention. Archibald with a shot, and that leaked through but wide of James Reimer's net. Mason Raymond tracked down by Darren Archibald. 
He's checked by Van Riemsdyk and another Toronto penalty coming up. And another one where Van Riemsdyk realized what he was doing exactly the time he started it and tried to cushion it. Man, it just seems it's happening every time. And David Clarkson was the one who's throwing some punches in there. Yeah, you know as a player, you're coming in, you're thinking about being physical, you want the puck. We saw it with Lupul earlier on and his reaction right away. Watch Van Riemsdyk just, as soon as he does it, he tries to grab him. He, he knows bad situation, bad play, and Clarkson comes in afterwards, and that's when the scrum ensues. Well, you know, JVR, you, you mentioned it, absolutely right. He tries to put the bear hug, and maybe the bear hug rule that Brian Burke has talked about so many times, maybe the bear hug rule would work here. Wrap your arms around a guy and almost hold him up as you take him into the boards instead of finishing your check. And you look at the Leafs bench there, Couple players reaching in from the bench to the ice. That's not going to be looked at very kindly by the NHL. That was worse than the hit, man. Reemsdijk really did. He try tried to hold protect up, and if he knew basically it was a bear hug. Yeah. Because Archibald wasn't hurt on the play, and I think he softened the blow by letting up. And Berkey's been such a proponent of it. He probably brought it up at 11 different general, general managers, manager meetings, and it's maybe one that makes some sense. We've just seen, even in this game alone, how many hits from behind in dangerous spots that you could eliminate totally just by wrapping your arms around the guy and finishing your check. And as you know, you, you watch it in slow motion, it's easy to say to react to that turn, but when you're dealing it in real time in life and trying to get in on the forecheck, boy, at times it's almost impossible. So an eighth power play for Vancouver. Boarding for Van Riemsdyk and a 10-minute misconduct to David Clarkson. Dan Hughes. Second power play unit starts. Burrows to Higgins. Alex Burrows got some open ice. Jason Garrison out of the reach of Ham Hughes. Chris Higgins. This has turned it into a pretty good line for Vancouver. Higgins, Burrows, Santarelli. Lots of speed, lots of grit. Garrison shot, tipped once, blocked by Dion Fanuf. Garrison to Santarelli. And over and back at the blue line, the play's offside with a minute eight seconds to go in this power play. Let's bring in Cassie Campbell Pasco. Well, Jim, you mentioned that the Leafs don't play until Friday at home versus New Jersey. They might get Mark Fraser back, but it'll be a good coaching moment. But also, the Vancouver Canucks, they actually go on a road trip now starting Tuesday in Phoenix, so their schedule gets a little bit busier, definitely more so than the Leafs, Jim. And, and tough road trips now in this new division because they go on the road to Phoenix and L.A., Anaheim, San Jose. There's not an easy night. A little different than the old Northwest division for the Vancouver Canucks. Well, and it's been true to form here. We've got seven and a half minutes left, and although it's been a 3 nothing game, you might think the top guys have been backed off. Well, not at all. Daniel Sedin, over 22 minutes. Henrik, the same. Kessler in that range so even on a game that looks to be under control it still have been the top guys out there i think vancouver's got a couple of guys who are still under a minute jeremy walsh tom sestito yannick weber barely played the exit one timer that was a hard shot that just missed and James Reimer gathers in the puck with 39 seconds left in the latest power play well one thing you can't say if you're looking at the Leafs game is blame the goaltender. Reimer had that first one as a tough one on the power play. He's been battling all night. There's a good high hard shot that Reimer fought. Got a piece of it with his elbow and it's been a shooting gallery again. Think about the first eight shots that Vancouver took. There were at least five absolute highlight of the night type saves. Could have been James three nothing Reimer. then, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So he gave them a chance, but they did. They played better in the back yeah. half of the first period, and then they stopped playing again early in the second. Daniel turns and shoots. That's blocked. Henrik Sedin. Daniel. Alex Edler. Back to Daniel. 
Kessler. The X is in front, then he couldn't touch the puck. Kick was checked by Carl Gunnarsson. Kessler gets it. Kicks it off to Henrik Sedin. Penalty's almost over. The exit moving in, but Tuleman blocked the pass. Canucks got it back. Van Riemsdyk's back on. Vancouver's one for eight with a man advantage. Leading three to nothing. Could have been a nice power play there. There's a steal. Ryan Kessler from Kuhlman right out front, and Reimer makes another wonderful save on a Daniel Sedin tip. Dave McClement off Kuhlman, who's at the end of a tough penalty-killing shift and wants to get off. Both teams change. And used to be extra. Brad Richardson into Darren Archibald, takes the shot wide of the net. Here's Jeremy Walsh, a rare cameo appearance in this game, out with Brad Richardson and Darren Archibald. Centering pass, knocked just wide. Higgins, excuse me, Hamhuis moves in. Archibald in front, the pass is there, Hamhuis scores! Four nothing, and on that shift, it looked like the Leafs just quit playing. So many special teams, penalty kill, the efforts there, and then the very next shift, that look from the coach says it all. Just winning some battles down low, and pretty simple play. You mentioned that fourth line. Richardson, though, does a nice job keeping it alive. Ham Hughes comes around, and watch Morgan Riley in front. This is a tough play for him. Two bodies in front, Archibald on one side, Ham Hughes, who started the play on the other. And it looked like Ham was able to get a piece of it right there. You know, your ball was there looking for his first NHL goal and, he, goal, and he came close to getting it. Ham just beat him to it. You know, you're in trouble when any one of two players could have scored with a tap in putt from the goal line. Darren Archibald, a former Barry Colt from Newmarket, Ontario, just about got his first in the NHL. Ham Hughes will get it, making a 4 0 Vancouver. Jay McClement to the net. And Roberto Luongo makes the save. And the play is stopped with just over five minutes to go in the third period. And now the shots are 45 18 Vancouver. Ham Hughes beat Archibald to the puck on CBC's Hockey Night in Canada. With five minutes and three seconds to go. But there's still time for some other activities here with some, uh, with some of the big boys on the ice, like Tom Sestito and Colton Orr. I would hope in a game like this, that's finished for the night. An icing call against Vancouver. Festive night here because of the Pavel Burry night, but usually in these games at some point, there's a massive Go Leafs Go chant that yeah, comes up in the building. And the Canuck fans it? try and drown it out. It just... This hasn't worked today. And credit the Canucks for taking care of that early. Their early push really softened that up. You know, that early push from the Vancouver Canucks was a big part of their 2010-2011 teams, and even before that, it disappeared for a couple of years after that Stanley Cup final. They waded into games. You remember games in here where they put teams away with an early goal and just dominate. That stopped for a while, and they seem to be back to it with an energized Sedins and Ryan Kessler healthy. Well, and right off the bat, Tortorella goes with an aggressive pinch both sides of the defense. Big time. You get the Sedin line first and third of the shifts, two shifts within the first two minutes, just trying to set the table for the game. And you get lots of depth from, from different players that scored. And that was kind of what... People were talking about coming into it. The Sedins don't score. Nobody scores. That's not the case tonight. Burroughs with a shot. And the Canucks came close to the fifth. Bill Kessel dumps the puck here. That really is the balance, isn't it, guys? Though the, the mileage that he's getting out of the top guys, but the surprise is on that third and fourth line. Richardson's been a great addition to this team. He's played a significant role. Santarelli and and then all of a sudden, the offensively, they found ways to win games. Play Archibald a lot tonight. There's a rebound and another shot, and James Reimer is just under siege. Looks up and hopes 
wishes that they would play straight time. Mason Raven with a chance to walk in. He shoots and Luongo stopped that. Richardson trying to clear the bucket. He gets it out to center. There are a lot of attempts, five hole on Luongo in this game. And obviously with no success. Brad Richardson and Darren Archibald get assists on the goal by Ham Hughes, his second of the season. That was the fourth, and let's look at them all. Well, his shots are 46 to 19, but it was the first power play of the game that got this crowd going Vancouver's way. Cassian with an opening in the slot area was able to score a quick wrister by Higgins, and then on the doorstep, Dan Ham Hughes makes it a four goal game. Archibald gets his first NHL point as one of the assists. It's a complete team effort, though. Goal from a defenseman, goal on the power play, fourth liner goal. Everybody's going to feel good about their game this afternoon. These four o'clock starts are strange. Vancouver has more than most. Toronto has none other than this one. Because they're always in prime time. In the East, got to be so ready to play the games. Long ceremony. You went on too long, Jim, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, and so that plays into it as well. You've got to be so prepared. Vancouver was, Toronto wasn't. And as a reward, they get to go off to Phoenix. And a good time to do that as the winter rains have arrived. Morgan Riley, it'd be a disappointing night for Morgan to come home with so many friends and family watching, and his team had been playing so well and winning. Lupel takes a shot that's blocked. Another penalty coming up. This time it's against Vancouver. And everyone on the ice has a look around to see who's going to get the gate, and it will be the Vancouver Canucks. And Jeremy Walsh gets the gate. You know, I just in on the puck, fishing for that loose puck. You saw the stick on the ice. Lupel was trying desperately to get another whack at it. And just an errant high stick. Ends up being the call. I'm not sure I saw it originally there. There it was, oh, yeah. right there on Smith. There was a power play late in the second period that could have got Toronto back into this game. And it wasn't bad, but they just didn't score. They're 0 for 3 on the night. So often their power players got them back in games and now shorthanded. Alex Burrows around Cody France into the net. And the fans thought there could have been a penalty. So did Alex Burrows as he looked back at the referee. They want to play straight time, too, though. Phil Kessel. Joffrey Lupel touched the puck back to Dion Phaneuf. Into the middle with Van Riemsdyk screening. One-timer by Lupel. Kessel, side of the net, can't jam the puck in. And Hamhuis is down, and he helps Luongo stop play. Well, the one scene to the left of me from the bench says it all for the game tonight. Nothing doing for the Maple Leafs, and Vancouver took a bite out of the Leafs. He actually takes a bite out of the stick. Just trying to tidy up the tape a little. Great show people losing their teeth. Well, Kevin's got his, I guess. Cody Franson, James Van Riemsdyk. Pushed away by Alex Edmund. Joffrey Lupo. Bill Kessel. Doug Dave Bullock, no Nazem Kadri, three wingers. Up front on the power play for Toronto. The last minute of play in the hockey game. Nikolai Kudelman, bouncer towards the net. This will be the 11th consecutive loss to the Vancouver Canucks for Toronto. They haven't won in here or anywhere since November 2003. It's hard to believe the Canucks. Yeah get the number of one team and you just can't seem to beat them. Gardner to Morgan Riley. On the other side, Mason Raymond shoots. That's blocked by Alex Hedman. Kevin BX off the boards. Santarelli cleared the puck and that should do it. Indeed it does. A dominant performance by the Vancouver Canucks. They continue their domination of the Toronto Maple Leafs, and Roberto Luongo gets his 64th career shutout on Pavel Bure night. 4-0, and here's Ron McClain.